bring you the love of the Lord live from Los Angeles, California, as we share in his glory and his love. Dear Lord, we love you. We lay our hearts before you. You are the reason why we live from the secrets of our heart. And a good day to you. Good evening, live from Los Angeles, California. And blessings of my, of my anointed and appointed one, my beautiful wife, Anita, manager of Anita Hewitt, is in the other room manning the controls as we bring you the love of the Lord. We're going to be touching down <coughs> in the book of Acts tonight. We're going to be speaking of the pierced heart. What do we do with that pierced heart once it's pierced? <coughs> what is the love of the realities that we must do and accomplish as we move into the, into the Lord's love, His unity, His truth? And as we put our finger into Acts, Chapter 2, 36, 37. Let's go before the throne of God and pray. Dear Jesus, we love you. We lay our hearts before you are the reason why we live from the secrets of our heart. We thank you for the unity of the Holy Spirit to be of one mind and one judgment of Christ. We thank you for this truth. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the moment that we come into your presence. We thank you for the absolute truth that you've bestowed upon us. We thank you, Lord, of your name. For you and how you've changed us, how you've changed our hearts, how you healed my wife into where she is today, and how you've healed our, grown our marriage to be the unity of your truth, your love, your presence in our life. In the master's name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Brethren, we live in a world that is ever so changing. We have the distractions from the internet, TV, food, sex, temptations, everything. But let us focus on God. Let us focus on the realities that we all have and the abundance of the truth. Let us focus on this movement that we have today, right now, your moment. Let's get right into Acts chapter 2, 36 and 37. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that, that same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in the heart, and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? This was actually the first public preaching after our Lord was taken up into glory. It was a very memorable sermon, I'm sure. The first fruits of the great harvest of the gospel testimony. Yet it is encouraging to my experience personally and professionally as a minister to those who engaged in preaching that the first sermon should have been so successful. 3,000 made up a grand take of fish at the first cast of the net. We are serving a great and growing cause in the way in the way God has chosen us. And we hope in the future to still see larger, larger results produced by that same undying and unchanging power which helped Peter to preach such a heart piercing sermon. Peter's discourse was not distinguished by any special display. He used not the words of man's wisdom or elegance. It was not an quotation or monologue, but it was a heart-moving argument. Yes, a heart-moving argument, entreaty, and exhortation. He gave his hearers a simple, well-reasoned and seasoned scriptural discourse. Sustained by the f facts of experience, and every passage of it pointed to the Lord Jesus, as our breath and as our words and our actions of today's life should always point to the Lord Jesus. It was in these respects the model of what sermon ought to be to its contents. His plea was personally and addressed to the people who stood before him, and it had pra had a practical knowledge addressed to the embrace of their conduct, to the embrace of the new life with Christ. It 
was aimed not at the head but at the heart. A reward of it was directed to the conscious and of the affections. It was plain, practical, and personal, and per pervasive. And in this was a model of, a, of, a, of what a sermon ought to be aimed at. And style. Yet Peter could, could have spoken otherwise under his own impression. But it was under the impression of God. After walking and breathing, with the Lord Jesus for, for three solid years feeling the embrace of God's love feeling the truth of what comes in for all of us to be of one mind one judgment of Christ to be of this elegance that we have tonight for all and all. But we must not forget, however, to trace the special success of the Sermon of the Day of Pentecost to the outpouring of the Holy Ghost of which Peter had shared. This is the time that we have. This is the time that we share. This is the absolute truth of the realities that we embrace of the power of the Lord Jesus. Lord, take us, love us for yours. There are many ministers out there who preach a strong word of God every day. And many, it is not what is behind the pulpit who is responsible of the hearts being pierced. It is you, the individual, in hearing the word of God who needs the Word of God, who needs to grow upon the Word of God. Let your hearts be pierced, to be changed forever in the truth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let your hearts be magnified forever. We hear peace. We hear people talking of peace. Look at Egypt. We have one rhetorical comment of paragraph and nonsense that means nothing but just some public relations display. We must not just speak of peace, but before we speak of peace, we must back it up with prayer. The nine fruits of the Spirit. All those nine fruits and pieces, one of those fruits is a gift from God. I cannot just be spoken of a word. Let's have peace between Palestine and Israel. Let's have peace because I, the President and Prime Minister, have made this great public display before the UN or the United Nations. Let us bring to the power of the world by the power of prayer. By having God pierce our heart. By having the embrace of the Lord Jesus Christ guide us to that realities of the truth. Guide us to that realities of this time right now. Of this moment. Of this time. His power is enhanced. Your power is enhanced a hundredfold when we move into the power of Christ. We go through the wonders, we go through the miracles, but it all starts with prayer. It all starts by getting into the Bible, getting into the Word, and having God embrace and pierce our hearts with His love. Of this time, God's endless rhyme brings us through the responsibility of the preacher. And there was much about Peter's own self that is well worthy of imitation. This sermon was born of the occasion, and it is used, and it is used the event of the hour as God intended it to be used. It was earnest without a trace of passion and prudent without a suspicion of fear. The preacher himself 
was self collected, calm, courteous, gentle. He aired no theories, but went on firm ground, stepping from fact to fact, from scripture to scripture. From plain truth to plain truth, he was patient at the beginning, all along, and the conclusive at the end. And he fought his way through doubts, prejudices, and errors. Her errors, and when he had come to the end, he stated the inevitable conclusion with a cleanliness and certainty. All along, he spake very boldly without m mincing the truth. Yet, with the wicked hands of crucified and slain him, whom God has highly exalted, he boldly accused them of the murder of the Lord of glory doing his duty in the sight of God and the good of their souls with great firmness and fearlessness. <clears throat> Yet there is a great tenderness in his discourse, impulsive and hot-headed Peter, who a little while before had drawn his sword to fight of his truth, does not in his instance use a harsh sword, but speaks with great gentleness and meekness of spirit using words and, and terms all through the address, which indicate a desire to conciliate and then to convince. Though he was faithful as Elijah, yet he used terms so courteous and kindly that if men took offense, it would be not because of any offensiveness of tone. And the speaker spoke about Peter was a gentle in the manner, but forceful in the matter. We seek of the truth. And many of us are afraid of the truth. As my spiritual mother, Dr. Eula Nelson, taught me many years ago, you'll be speaking of the truth, she told me. But the truth is the, mo is the most unpopular subject in the world. And many will turn on you for that fear. And many will turn on you because you have changed too much in the name of Jesus. And she was so correct with everything of that moment, that matter. What God had placed upon her presence, upon her life, to share with her spiritual son. But when we come into the realities that we have, is God's love so simple that we deny it? That we don't embrace it? that we use church as a way of just as a public relations material and not really dive into the word of God. We seek of the truth, we seek of his love, we seek of his kind. I am of God. God gave me the greatest gift besides my two children and a mother in my current life. The greatest gift is my current wife, Evangelist Anita Hewitt. Of this period, we have much responsibility in our lives, in our times, that we share from our testimonies, our victory testimonies. We share from what the Lord places upon our hearts as we actually were just coming from another Bible study at our, at our mother, at our, at our home church. And the Lord places upon my heart, my heart, our hearts on our journey home. We are unconventional church, unconventional ministry. We come into the world, we come into the sweet embrace, we come into the times that we have. We come into the embrace that we share of his love and of his time. Dear Lord, we love you. We come and seek your truth. We come and seek your love. All of us must be battle ready. All of us must seek of that truth of what God has placed into our hearts. All of us need the Lord, need his time, need this moment of the sincerity that we all have. Allow God pierce your heart. Allow God to come into this time. Deal tenderly as Peter, 
but very plainly upon their evil conduct towards the Lord Jesus. They came unto his own, and, not, and his own received him not. As a nation, Israel had rejected him whom God had sent. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem had gone further, and had consented unto his death. Nay, had even clamored for him, crying, Crucify him, crucify him. Had the Jews exclaimed, His blood be on us and on our children, none of them had protested against the murder of an innocent one. For many of them had been eager to make an end of him. This piece, in plain words, changed upon them, and they could not deny it, nor did they pretend to do so. It is well when a sense of guilt compels a man to stand silent under the rebuke of God. We then have hope of him that will seek for pardon. Dear Lord, we ask you to come into this embrace. For those who don't know the Lord, dear Lord, bring those and touch their hearts, whether it's the AM hours, PM hours, or we are in the West Coast of North America, your new day is just beginning. Your new life of the Lord is just beginning. It is time to change the lives around you by first changing your life. I'm going to come forward in the name of the Lord. Dear Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I turn my life over to you, O oh God. Take me, love me, I'm yours. I lay myself on the altar of you, O oh Lord, for a new life, a new change, a new manner, a new way of breathing. I acknowledge you, that you are the Son of God who came down unto this earth to die for our sins and rose from the dead so we could share in the inheritance of your love, of your truth, and God's glory. I commit myself to you and ask you to command my life, command my breath so I could walk on your walk and walk in your statutes. For the master's name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer right now, my wife's praise your name and your glory. I am lifting your name up to the heavens, but right, most important right now, before the throne of God, the angels are singing in your name as we speak. As we speak. We need to focus upon the Word of God. Your homework assignment before our next broadcast, which will be very soon, is Second Kings 23. King Zohiah. Zohiah. Josiah. He stomped on the bones of the evil, wicked kings. He brought down their false statues, their false gods. He brought down, in a previous broadcast, you could see, he brought down the high ends of the low ends. The false altars of false gods. And as, again, I say, he stamped on the dead bones of the evil kings. No, nowhere were they in sight. Yet, was it his responsibility that many hearts were not pierced? No. Because distractions were around at that time, just like bigger distractions were around today. We cannot go before the throne of God and blame Twitter and Facebook for not knowing God. Or TV shows, or mom's apple pie. We are of the age of knowledge. We see countries being torn apart by reasons that it's hard to express, but God can change the hearts of man in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. And of this time, God's endless form of His love guide us to that sweet embrace. Guide us to that truthful em embrace that we all cry for. Let God pierce your heart. Let God seek the truth and seek you more and more of this precious name. 
of this time. And we go away from our sin. We exalt God, we don't exalt ourselves. And we come into the majesty of God. Yea, sinners, seek his grace. Whose wrath he cannot bear, fly to the shelter of the cross and find salvation there. Of this truth that we have. Of this time. We saw one hanging on a tree in agonies and blood, who fixed his languid eyes on me as, as near his cross I stood. Sure, never till my latest breath can I forget that look, that seemed to change me with his death, though not a word he spoke. My conscience felt and owned the guilt and plunged me into dis in despair. I saw my sins, sins and his blood had split and helped to nail Alas, I, I knew not what I did, but now my tears are vain. What shall my trembling soul be hid, for I, the Lord, have slain. All of us have denied God, betrayed him. We are guilty of the sin of the crucifixion as we fall deeper and deeper into sin. Let us cheerfully inquire how we can end our opposition and prove ourselves to be his friends and humble servants by turning our lives over to God. And have the power to share in the power of God, to be a witness to others as you were once witnessed to just a few minutes ago by me and my wife. Men and brethren, be roused in your own actions as Acts chapter 2, 36 and 37 expresses men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? We come into what God may write out this old, old story on your hearts. Oh, that he would issue a new edition of his gospel of love printed on your hearts. Every man's conversation is specially printed copy of a poem of salvation. May the Lord issue you hot from the press this morning, a living epistle to be known and read of all men, and especially to be read by your children at home and by your neighbors at, in the same street. May the Lord grant that hearts may be pricked by this sermon, by his name's sake. We need your help. Anita and I and our ministry team, we come into many different worlds with the power of technology. We go also, uh, myself, yours truly, the man Brian Tewitt competes professionally in marathons, but a few nights before the actual race starts, um, we have taught Bible studies starting out of five people, 10 people, 80 people, 60 people, 600 people. God, it's all God. Whether it's in person or the power of technology, we need your help. We are asking you to place a seed into this fruitful ministry. And John chapter 4, verse 35 says to you that your harvest is now. Don't have, don't have, to, don't have to wait four months from now for your fields to be white. Your harvest is now. Ready for the picking, ready for the pruning. That is your vision found in the scripture that I just said, John chapter 4, verse 35. From there, the manifestation is proven to you. But the living word of God is always pregnant, revealing the, the manifestation of God's glory. And then, and then, brethren, Malachi chapter 3 is birthed above your heads, that the windows of heaven open up above you, put down blessings upon you, that you have no, no room in your storehouse to plant them or keep them or save them. Jesus, Jesus loves you. Jesus guides you to that sweet embrace of the new you. The sweet embrace of the power of change. To have your hearts pricked by the power of God. And before I close, remember the story that I share. When Jesus was walking down the street, 
and he said to his disciples, someone just touched me. Out of all these let's say, hundreds of fingers and hands that were touching Jesus, there was just one young lady who touched him in faith. Everyone else thought he was equal to, you know, equivalent to a rock star in today's world. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, I want to be with you. I want to touch you. I want to follow you. I want to be cool like you. One out of that group of people touched him by faith. And she was healed. And she was healed. I guarantee you she spent that, her rest of her life, being overwhelmed by that experience and following in the footsteps of Jesus to the cross, after the cross, after the resurrection, as an obedient servant of Christ. We come, I say to you, let faith touch you. Let faith come into your lives. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let's go before the throne of God and pray out. Dear Jesus, we love you. We'll lay our hearts before you. are the reason why we live from the secrets of our heart. We thank you for the unity of the Holy Spirit to be a one mind and one judgment in Christ. We thank you for your love, your truth. How your truth sets us all free. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for the truth. We thank you for your love, for the sweet embrace, for the power of you, O Lord. In the master's name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. Brethren, that does conclude our broadcast for this evening, live from Los Angeles, California, on behalf of the anointed, appointed one, my beautiful wife, Evangelist Anita Hewitt, and yours truly, the man Brian Hewitt. We thank you for your time. Until next time. Do stay up to date with all of our news and information of our exciting crusades and pastors' conferences coming to your part of the world at BrianHewitt.com. BrianHewitt.com. We walk by faith and not by sight. Au revoir. Adios. Good day. <laughs>